John Hartfield, an artist, a pioneer, and a fighter. Born in 1891 in Berlin, Germany, he was originally named Helmut Hirschfeld and the son of a socialist poet. Abandoned by his parents at a young age, the boy was brought up by various close relatives for shelter. Then, by 1910, Helmut had found his way into becoming an art student in Munich. Four years later, the First World War began. Under the rule of the monarchy, in the early months of the war, the Kaiser, who was the German Emperor at the time, and his militarists succeeded in persuading patriotic Germans to greet each other on the street with Gottstrafe, or in English, God punish England. As stated by John Hartfield himself, he felt that this kind of chauvinistic idiocy caused him to change his name forthwith to John Hartfield. In the search for new forms to express a new conviction, Hartfield and his friends discovered photo montage. Originally, it seemed that soldiers who were on the Western Front, the main theater of war during the First World War, have been unable to report back the butchery horrors to the public, which turned Hartfield to pasting photographs and cutouts from illustrated papers to tell their tale of horror to their families and friends back home. Using this ingenious technique, Hartfield and his friend George Gross invented the new technique of photo montage. For years, John Hartfield and his friends portrayed the gruesome horrors of war through the use of art as a weapon for the media. For example, in 1928, Hartfield created The Face of Fascism, a montage which spread over Europe with tremendous force. A skull-like face of Mussolini, an Italian leader for the National Fascist Party. Finally, by 1918, Hartfield made a decision that would ultimately impact the rest of his career. He became a member of the Berlin Dada Group as a protest to Germany's current barbaric state and also joined the German Communist Party. This was also the year that the Allies had succeeded and Germany accepted that it could no longer continue fighting this unwinnable war and sign an armistice to prevent any further fighting with the enemy. Not only did Germany had to face the embarrassment of losing, but it had to pay reparations. Losing a tenth of captured territory and dismantling its army. As its imperial government began to collapse, civil unrest and worker strikes spread across the country. Then, in 1929, the Great Depression happened. It led to American banks withdrawing their loans from Germany, and the already German economy collapsed overnight. Adolf Hitler, who was Hartfield's main enemy, seized this opportunity to take advantage of the people's anger which led him to a high chair in politics and then to Fuhrer. As Germany suffered from inflation, depression, and immediate threat of fascism, Hartfield aggressively placed photography in the service of political agitation, which motivated him to fight against fascism. One of his most significant artworks which display this mockery was his famous 1933 artwork, Goring, the Executioner of the Third Reich, an image of Hermann Goring. 
Before getting into the idea behind this artwork, here are some basic details you should know about it. Goring the Executioner is a photo montage in which news photographs are manipulated with drawing into a new image. It is a black and white photo montage and it first appeared on the front page of the Arbiter Illustrate Zeitung or IE's newspaper which in English stands for the Workers Illustrated Paper. Since it had the word workers in it, this paper is intended for people in favor for the German Communist Party. In the background of the artwork, you may see a burning building. This building is known as the Reichstag, or in other words, the German Parliamentary Building, which is a perfect example of neoclassical architecture. You can also see the, the face of the man holding the axe is Hermann Göring, a political and military leader for the Nazi party. His head is being conjoined with the body of a butcher and it appears to have a swastika on his right arm. You can see that based on his face that he is not pleased with what is happening. You can say that his face is filled with fear, hate, and an aggressive drive to kill. Now, you may be wondering, what is the Goring Executioner about? Well, the best way to understand the elements used in the artwork is by thinking it this way. You are John Hartfield, a man who despises the Nazis and a loyal member to the German Communist Party. Now, it is 1933, and you have heard the news that a young worker set the parliament building on fire and is being accused of conspiring with the communists. Hermann Göring said that this is an event where all communists must be killed for attacking the Nazis. This is John Hartfield's way of saying that you are a butcher for hurting the communist. This is not justice, but murder. Now, let us take a look at the background and the objects in the painting. John Hartfield uses black and white elements to give an unvarnished and blunt quality. You can also see that Hartfield increases the thickness of his neck to emphasize the aggressiveness of his lying face. Goring's meat cleaver and bloody apron have the quality of factual truth. Hartfield's use of Nazi blood shed proved to be prophetically true. John Hartfield's artwork Goring the execution is a way of saying that terror is coming our way. For my student artwork, I have decided to go a different way than John Hartfield. I have decided to make a collage of all of a majority of John Hartfield's most famous photo montages because Despite being blacklisted by the Nazis, he continued to work on these humorous photo montages to show that he is not afraid of what's coming ahead. As you can see, I have made a photo montage collage in the shape of a muscly arm because he was a man that displayed strength from outside and from within. Thank you for listening.